And now it's time for Corner Table, our exclusive theater review segment. Now it features legendary critic John Simon and relative newcomer Justin Brown. Simon, he's written for theater for several decades now, including 35 years at New York Magazine. He's also been published in the New York Times, the Washington Post, and too many more to count. Brown? He reviews shows, and he's also an actor as well as director. And tonight, they both take a look at the revival of Angels in America. It's been nominated for 11 Tony Awards this year, and in 1993, it won the Tony Award for Best Play and the Pulitzer Prize for Drama. Hello, Corner Table friends, and hello, John. Hi there. How are you? Fine, and you? Good. So today we're discussing a play that I personally hold very close, dear, and near to my heart. Angels in America, the first revival ever. Mm -hmm. um, it is a West End transfer all the way from Across the Pond, starring Andrew Garfield specifically and Nathan Lane are the two big names behind it. Marianne Elliott directed it. I do want to let everybody know the show is presented in two parts, and so today we're just going to focus on the first part, which is Millennium Approaches. And then you have to tune in for when we talk about part two. John, since you saw the original production, how did you feel about this? Well, I, I felt it was all right, except, of all things, Nathan Lane, who I think was much too comical. He is a born comic, and somehow he can't get rid of that comic element. Mm. And whereas the original cone was very good and very, very fine. Sure, I would agree. I feel like the whole production itself is relatively funny. I don't think that's a bad thing, though. Um, but I do think it becomes a question of flamboyance, which is kind of funny for me to bring up. But when we think about Roy Cohn and we think about who he was and how he's presented in this play, I think there's a lot of shielding that happens about his sexuality on purpose. However, I also think that at this point, we're so far removed from him in people's realistic kind of contact to Roy Cohn that Nathan Lane may have felt a little more free to play with the more comical or flamboyant parts that are, that are written in there by Tony Kushner. But I don't think that necessarily those are the best or strongest choices to make. Well, I think Cohn was a frightening person, whereas Nathan Lane is a little too jolly, a little too goody-goody. Andrew Sullivan, who is one of the best writers on homosexual subjects, was very much against this play. He felt it neither had the depth nor the subtlety that uh, the problems it involves entail. Um, and I don't know, it's, it's hard to say because it is so unusual. It's not like anything else we've had that, in a sense, works for it. Right. But on the other hand, it also allows it to take certain liberties and byways mm -hmm. and side issues. There are a lot of smart things happening in this production, too, in terms of, you know, the set. I feel Millennium Approaches was a lot safer than Perestroika. It's still very different. So what I'll say is, I say Angels in America, whether you can get to part one, part two, or both all together, is worth seeing. Um, we will get into more on this production when we talk about part two. Um, but I do think that it is a master class in lighting, in design, in direction. And so we will see you when we finish this discussion. And coming up next, From Homeless to Harvard, the incredible story of Byron Brooks. You will hear from him, and he'll explain just how he managed to do it.